going to play some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the 16-bit systems. Gonna do a little audio comparison here real quick on the title screen. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was of course a fantastic beat-em-up in the arcades. Of course, the original Ninja Turtles arcade game, which I think came out in 89, if I remember correctly. And then they made a NES version, which was very limited because of the hardware. But it was still really good. The arcade game, it, it was ported to um, Xbox Live. I don't know if they ever made it on PlayStation 3. But the Xbox Live version was... Um, five dollars when it came out and it was online play and everything. It's no longer on the marketplace because of the I'm talking about the original arcade game, not not that Turtles in Time reshield or whatever it was. But they pulled it off the market because of the licensing. License expired or something. But then the arcade sequel, which of course Turtles in Time, came out. And it was called uh, Ninja Turtles 2, even though it was called Ninja Turtles 4 on the Super Nintendo. Because it was the fourth Ninja Turtles game to come out on Nintendo hardware. And from a tactical standpoint, the arcade version is superior. Just because of the hardware. But I love the Super Nintendo version much, much more. Mainly because it was the first home Ninja Turtles game to come out to really capture that arcade beat-em-up quality. And second, they also had some extra content. They had an extra level or two, uh, had the Technodrome level, had some extra bosses. Although it was still only two-player. Both Super Nintendo and Genesis versions are still only two-player. So one of the main differences in the gameplay is this dash move. It either dashes automatically or you set it in the options to fo tap forward twice to dash. Where in the Genesis version you hit a hit the C button, I believe it is. Hit a button to dash. And it's actually a little handier. Actually that cut better on the on the Sega. But another thing that uh, the Super Nintendo version has over the arcade and the Genesis counterpart is also, I'll show it later once some more foot soldiers come up. But you can actually um, throw the foot soldiers, whether it's you throw them to the screen or do like the judo throw. Uh, hit hold forward or hold down, and you can actually do it like with a command. Versus the arcade version, it's it's random. And the Genesis version, I think it's random. I haven't been able to do it on command. It's a little hard to do it on the Genesis version, if so. And also, the Genesis version, you don't throw them towards the screen. It's just the judo throw. And they are two different games. The Genesis version wasn't... It uses a lot of elements from Turtles in Time and a little bit from uh, the first arcade game as well. But it's kind of more of an original game. Kind of, it's, it's kind of like a, a loose translation of Turtles in Time. Kind of like um, Dracula X on Super Nintendo is kind of a a loose translation, kind of like a loose remake of Rondo Blood.
and the Super Nintendo version, I think, is the better game, because Genesis version is still good. I mean, if, if you had the Genesis back in the day and you didn't have a Super Nintendo, so the Genesis game, the Hyperstone Heist, was your only option, it was still a good game. Like this here. Oh, here. Let's try it again. So I can actually do that in command. And they did that because of the the boss, the first boss fight against the Shredder, because you have to throw guys in the screen. But the Genesis Turtles game, it's it's very repetitive. It, it has longer levels, but has less boss fights, and almost all the boss battles are kind of the same. Because they, they run one side of the screen, they shoot their projectiles, and they run into the other side of the screen, they shoot their projectiles, they like dash or crawl or... It's, it's essentially the same movements for almost everyone, with the exception of Shredder. Shredder is exact same fight on both Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. So, I mean, my theory behind that is I think the Genesis version was rushed. I think, I think it started it later in the, the development versus Super Nintendo. Because it should have been a better version. Especially considering the hardware on the Genesis is actually a little more closer to the arcade hardware. It uses the same CPU, although much, much, much slower. Not doing very good in this game. A little out of practice. Of course, they added a whole bunch of uh, neat little features in this game, like time attack and a versus mode and stuff like that. So. What it lacks in four player, it makes up for in bells and whistles. So that's good. So it's kind of weird that they didn't add a lot of this extra content in the Genesis version, like the extra boss fights and whatnot, so... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I still think the game is rushed or something. Color is a little better on Super Nintendo because of, of the hardware, but graphics and sound, it's they're, they're pretty good for their respective systems. Especially Genesis version. Even though Super Nintendo has better music and sound, I really like the Genesis version of of the music. I'll switch that over here. But they added a lot of bosses in this game that were not, not, not a lot, they added a few bosses in this game that uh, were not in the arcade version. They added them on Super Nintendo version. Characters that were in the cartoon like uh, uh, Slash, Bebop, Rocksteady, and whatnot. In the arcade version, Shredder would send you back in time right at the end of this level. Well, there's a whole nother level after this after this game before going back in time, where you go through the Technodrome. And I actually just played through the whole entire arcade game recently. I played it before, but I never played never played it from start to finish. 
course, Ninja Turtles back in late 80s, early 90s was just a phenomenon. It was almost like Transformers is now. If the movies were better, it'd probably, probably make a bigger comeback than it has. The last movie tried to uh, appease the old fans, taking a lot of elements from the old, old cartoon. But it wasn't good enough. The movie's alright. I mean, I, I was expecting it to be worse. Too bad the original arcade game, the first one, didn't get a good, didn't get a good 16-bit port. I always thought they should have made it on the Sega CD, like they did uh, Final Fight. That would have been really good. If you can do this judo throw every time, you can actually uh, go through the game pretty quickly. Uh, getting pinned down here. Oh, that was horrible. The Genesis version, that, that run command on a button, comes in really handy. I usually set it to double tap on the Super Nintendo version, and the options. Forgot to do that, that's okay. These guys are always a pain. The guys that block. I don't know why they didn't put the Shredder's uh, laugh from the cartoon in here. Probably because they had to pay the actor or something. Well, unfortunately, he died three or four years ago. For those who don't know, the voice actor that played the Shredder in the original cartoons, he's the guy that played uh, Uncle Phil on the Fresh Prince with Will Smith in it. Let's switch the music back over so we can get some good comparison here. Uh oh.
Yeah, it's unfortunate that the Genesis didn't get a didn't get a better Turtles game. They got a good Turtles game, but they didn't get a great Turtles game. Because the hardware and the fan base, they definitely deserved a little bit better. I think a lot of it had to do with uh, the Mode 7 effects on the Neon Knight Rider level. I think they should do like a kind of a hybrid between Turtles in Time and the original arcade game. Kind of ported some more elements over from that. Like they ported some stuff over, like the back Baxter Stockman fight. He's in that little metal flying thing, dropping the mousers. Rocksteady, they kind of did, but it's a different, different character model. It's not like a, it's not the graphics taken right out of the game. That would have been good if they did that. So when you're playing this game on a hard difficulty, all the foot soldiers that come out during this boss fight, they're all the foot soldiers that block. So that makes this boss fight really difficult. Good way to uh, counter that is a run. If I can get a run going. Run. Do the dash move, because you can't block the dash move, and then throw him. Ugh. Getting beat up pretty good. There we go. So the Genesis version, even though you don't travel through time, instead of a pirate ship, it's like a, a ghost ship. Um, the prehistoric caves are just like an underground cave on the way to the Tekken drone. So it uses a lot of the a lot of the elements from the game, even though it doesn't have the time travel aspects. There are a lot of time travel stories that are coming out for Ninja Turtles around this time. I mean, you had the third movie, which was a time travel movie. You had this game. Uh, Cartoon actually had a time travel episode around that time as well. So they kind of all came out at the same time. Great cartoon. And the first the first movie that came out too was really good. Kind of that first movie that came out that had that it was the last movie for first Ninja Turtles movie, last movie that really had that eighties grittiness to it. You know that that crime that crime-ridden uh, New York vibe to it. <laughs> it's just like the color and the atmosphere of it kind of makes it feel like a, a PG-13 movie. Especially the scene where like the, the kids are like being bad where he's like trying to turn all the... gather all the kids, all the juveniles, and turn them into eventually foot soldiers, but... You see kids like, you know, smoking and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, the second movie, The Secret of the Ooze, lightened it up a little bit. But it definitely showed that uh, Shredder and the Foot Clan, I mean, they were, they were villains. It gave you a reason to root for the turtles. Yeah. 
Come on. Come on. There we go. I remember this guy from the cartoon, but I don't remember what episode he was in, or what it was about. The arcade version had like some goo monster or something. <clears throat> of course, the, the boss fights in the Super Nintendo version, they're actually different boss fights. You don't see this guy running to the run to the edge, throwing his projectiles, and then doing some kind of dash move to the edge again, to the opposite edge. Like in the Genesis version. So there's actually some some different stuff in this. <laughs> so it doesn't feel repetitive like the Genesis version. That's my main, main issue with the Genesis version, is the game just feels too repetitive. First time I played it, I actually got bored halfway through playing it. Super Nintendo version I can play over and over again. So there's the pirate ship level, which on the Genesis game it's actually a ghost ghost ship. So they can have the still have the level without having the, the time travel aspect to it. Yeah, Teenage Mutant, Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was such a phenomenon back in the 80s where even the the first Ninja Turtles game on the NES, which is really not that good of a game, was still a popular game. Uh, oh, oh, I got pinned in the corners. Axe! Axe! Oh, same thing happened again. Those freezing you guys suck too. Oh, not again! <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me, come on! <laughs> That would have been a whole bunch of quarters if I was playing the arcade game there. Let's 
So these are probably my favorite bosses in the game here. Mainly because they were not in the arcade game. And I love the characters. I'm probably going to die here. Yep. See, is it going to make me restart the level? I think it is. I'll play Raphael. I actually like playing Raphael better in this version. He's a little quicker to play. There we go. Raphael is the character I usually played in this game back in the day. Donatello I like better in the Genesis version because that dash move is so easy to do. It's hard to do in this one. So in this version I like a quicker character. Uh oh, uh oh. Come pin down again. And that is how arcades made money back in the day. get you on both sides there. There we go. I should probably jump kick more. Come on. be able to beat this game on hard. I'm playing on normal. Although when you play it on hard you actually get uh, more continues. So a good trick with this boss fight with Bebop and Rocksteady, unlike Toka and Rezar, when one character dies, they actually both die. So you can actually just concentrate your hits on one character. Like, I'm just focusing on Rocksteady.
There we go. See, I'm down to one life. Let's see how well I can do. So I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but uh, when I'm playing is Super Nintendo version on the right. The Genesis version is pre-recorded footage from earlier, just like my last two videos. Oh, crap. <laughs> trying to save the pizza. That's okay. I'm still at pretty good health. So this Leatherhead fight is pretty much the same as the Genesis version. It's also the same as every Genesis version boss fight. Oh, he doesn't throw the lobsters at you in the Genesis version. Like I said, I, I think the Genesis version was just rushed. I think they just started late in development. I think after I finish filming this game, I'm going to have to play this game again and practice.
doing much better now. So in Genesis version that I recorded earlier, even though it feels more repetitive, I'm almost to the end of the game. Or in this one, I still got a couple stages left. So it feels more repetitive, but it's a shorter game. Still a good game, just not a great game. That tail gets me every time. This level was in the arcade game. It was either this level that wasn't, or the the star base level afterwards that wasn't. One of the two. So there we go. The round pizzas. <laughs> the round pizza box. So this crank fight is very similar to the Genesis version. One of the few uh, boss fights in the Genesis game that isn't repetitive like the other boss fights. in the Genesis version is a little more predictable. A little easier to kind of learn the pattern. This one he kind of flies around a little bit more. A little more random.
Almost got him. There we go. There we go. This is a neat level. I like this. I like this stage. Extra guy will come in handy. Yeah, don't need to be surrounded by those guys again. Doing much better at this now. Of course, as you saw in the Shredder fight on the Genesis version, it's almost identical to the Super Nintendo version that's coming up. I think the colors and the abilities might be different. We'll find out when we get up here. Don't remember. Switch the sound back real quick. Hopefully I can last till the pizza up here. I think there's a pizza up here. Oh, no, I didn't. This is one of those games where it's definitely easier with another player. Mainly because if you die and lose all your guys and you continue, you continue right there and not at the beginning of the stage.
here's the second crane fight. Of course, with this fight, you got to watch out for the stuff spitting out of the side. So you kind of want to stay in the middle. Kind of hit him from the bottom or the top. Not doing too bad so far. Oh, oh man. I don't remember if that's a one hit. I don't think it's a one hit kill. I think it just does a lot of damage. Of course, I got the gameplay on the left on on loop, so it's on repeat. Recorded earlier. Almost got him. Come on. There we go. Should just be a couple more hits. There we go. And of course, the final battle. Technodrome, the final shell shock. And it's time to fight Kevin Nash. For those that get that wrestling reference. So when he glows red, he shoots the fire. So you don't want to be in front of him, because he'll go, oh, my toe, my toe. When he goes green, that's a one-hit kill. Blue, or kind of a lightish blue, he'll shoot up in the air, so you don't want to jump kick him. But it's usually okay to kind of get in front of him, as long as you're not too close. It's a little easier on the Genesis version because when he's facing in a direction, he actually won't turn around. In this one, he actually kind of turns around. This one, he kind of have to wait until he starts firing his ability. There we go. And he is really hard with Donatello in the Super Nintendo version. Just because Donatello doesn't move very fast. But Raphael is much, much easier. So as long as I don't get hit by the orb attack, I should be good. The orb, of course, that attack right there, which is a one-hit kill. There we go.
minor differences, but the fight's pretty much identical in both versions. You gotta beat on hard mode to show the ending with like them on the turtle blimp and stuff like that. But yeah, that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Let me know what version you think is a better game, as long as it's a Super Nintendo version. I'm just kidding, you, you, can, you can let me know if you like the Genesis version better. And please subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.